So good afternoon and welcome to the next section of A Course in Miracles Workbook for Students Part 2. And we move to the next section, which is what is the body? And it's almost like asking the question, what is nothing? So the true self, the God is pure energy extending. The extension of God is the sonship. One part of that extension chose to imagine, dream a dream of nothingness, dream a separation. And so that son of God that is dreaming separation, I mean, and I have no idea whether it's only one son or hundreds of sons dreaming, but in essence, the dream of the universe is one son's dream. Why? Because we all see the universe in the same way. Therefore, we may have a localized subjective reality, but our objective reality all appears pretty much the same. Um, and therefore, one son dreaming. So that self, that son asleep, that forgot what it is, in trying to remember himself as he tried to imagine himself, thought up ideas. Each idea, each thought is a thought that took form. Each thought became a fractured part of the dreamer, therefore a fractured part of spirit. Um, and that, and spirit cannot take form, but is dreaming that it's taken form. And that's why I also say that Jesus is not the embodiment of God on earth, but a symbol of God in man, the way that he in self-realization and self-awareness acts out from a place of Christ-minded awareness, right-minded awareness. And that's what Jesus is meant to be, a symbol for how we should behave, non-judgmental, unconditionally accepting of all, completely loving, and just of being of service to one another, to our brothers. So as, as we separated, as the dreamer was dreaming um, and started imagining, you know, at first he imagined himself as split in two, and then two became 12, and 12 became 144,000, not special, um, not the chosen ones, just as he was fracturing himself trying to remember what he is, and 144,000 became 5.2 million, and that became 6.3 billion, and then eventually nine septillion fractured thoughts. And all of those thoughts are desperately trying to remember. They're thoughts of trying to remember different ways of remembering what, what our true self is, but while we're asleep in the dream, those thoughts cannot. However, within the dreamer that fell asleep is the memory of God, because its essence is the memory of God. So every single fracture has within itself the sleep, dreamy, illusion thought, and within each thought is the memory for God. And so when God, God called out symbolically to his dream to awaken God's voice, God creates his voice, speaks it into the dream. It's the voice for God calling the voice for God memory in us to awaken Holy Spirit. Our, our essence energy, which animates us as fractured body minds, that is the Holy Spirit of God, the energy essence of God calling us to awaken. So what is a body really? A body is simply a illusionary fence. The son of God imagines dreams he has built to separate parts of his self, his true self, capital S self, from other parts so that by keeping himself asleep, by keeping his dream asleep, he can keep away his imaginary fear of his imagined God because he cannot remember his father. He cannot remember his source, but he's imagined a source. Why has he imagined a source? Why, is he imag why has he imagined a God? Because there's a call to love, a call to return to our core essence, our core essence, God. And so not, ha not having the ability as he created, made the separation of remembering his true source, he imagined what it was like and then took on his own attributes of make and destroy and imagine God would also make and destroy and possibly even destroy him. So he's afraid of waking up. He, I, the, the we that are dreaming are afraid of waking up because we think we're going to be destroyed once we wake up. And so what we want to do is we want to bring truth to illusions. And so by bringing truth to illusions, we want to make this experience of ours spiritual, special, feel better about ourselves because we're now spiritual. And what does it do? It lifts us a little, but it keeps us again then trapped in another rung of spiritual specialness, never really truly awakening to self. And that's exactly what Christianity did with, with the concept of Jesus. They objectified it, made it into a solid being, which is now a spirit being. Jesus is not a being. Jesus is simply a thought that once upon a time took form. It's now a thought form in the collective dreaming mind, calling 
the rest of its fractured selves to awaken to itself because that which was the aspect of Jesus is awake to self. It's now one with the Christ mind. A part of the mind is awake. A part of the mind is asleep. The part of the mind that is asleep is the one that is, is the part that has dreamt of the universe. The part of the mind that is awake, Christ mind, calls the rest of its fractured sleeping parts to awaken to self. If Jesus awoke to self, where does Jesus reside? No more Jesus. No more Jesus body mind. Just the light energy that was Jesus returns to the Christ mind. It's that Christ mind that calls to us. While we're unaware of self, while we still have a belief in something above us that's going to save us, that interpretation of the voice that calls us from within gets misinterpreted as the voice for Jesus calling us to awaken. That's the mistake Helen Schuchman did when she wrote this course. By the end of the course, she got it. She had a very close relationship with the what she imagined was talking to her, Jesus. She had a very close relationship with the awake part of the Christ mind, her own awake part of the mind, which animates the, the body mind and is the energy essence which allows all life to exist. And that energy essence is Holy Spirit. So, but the dreaming mind wants to keep all these aspects separated because it fears being destroyed. It is within this fence he thinks he lives. So now we're talking about the localizations, the fractured localizations. And so the dreamer is, when you're sleeping at night, you're unaware you're dreaming. You're living your dream out through the characters you've imagined. Neither the characters know you're dreaming, neither do you know you're dreaming. The characters in the dream think they're real. Yet where do the characters in your dream, night dreams exist? In your dreaming mind. Yet the voice for God inside that which dreams calls for it to awaken. This is we, we play the cycle on a daily basis. We're programmed to fall asleep, wake up, so that through the sleeping, waking up, sleeping, waking up, and dreaming in between sleep and awake, we can realize as above, so below. It's actually playing out exactly what's happening. It is within the fence he thinks he lives to die as it decays and crumbles. For within this fence, he thinks that he is safe from love. Love God from the light he is. Identifying with his safety, body, mind, he regards himself as what his safety is. So now the localizations then believe they are this body and they believe that the thoughts of the collective mind that play out through his filter brain then are their own thoughts. We don't have a single thought that's ours. It, every thought we have is dreamt up by the dreaming mind. And how else could he be certain he remains within the body, keeping love outside? If he believes this is real, no one doubts the world is real while they're asleep. No one doubts their body is real. And the body is actually the device. If this is real, the world must be real. Because I can feel pain. I can feel sensations. I can feel emotions. I have questions. I have thoughts. And so this is real. This is happening. And therefore, that must be happening too. And that's how the dreaming mind keeps us trapped in duality. And then it lifts us a little bit by giving us saviors or the idea of saviors. And instead of realizing the savior is the symbol for the awakening of self and through the behavior, because what do we know about Jesus? We have no idea what his thoughts were or Ramana or Buddha or Krishna or any of these wonderful people that came before us and awoke to self. All we know is of their actions. But if you pay attention to the writings that describe their actions they were unconditionally loving but they also like a jesus had very fierce grace if you think of the, the story of the temple when he arrived at the temple and realized they had turned it into a market he went and sat down breathed to 1000 made a whip and then went to town and said not in my father's house fierce grace this is not what a temple's for you've got the entire planet to play and sell and, and do whatever you want to this is a place for silent stillness. This is a place for abiding in our with our with our source, with our Father, with with God. And it, yet, it's also I want to draw attention: the fact that he believes this is a body, and that he's afraid of love, afraid of this imagined God. He's imagined not true God in which we abide, but this imagined God of the ego, the, the God of the Bible, in other words, um, and the God of many religions is therein lies our authority problem. And how do you know someone has an authority problem? They're control freaks. They want to control everything. They want to control everyone, including themselves and all surroundings around them. And they resist everything. And they're constantly complaining about everything at the same time trying to control everything. And, and how can you control everything? You're going to spontaneously combust. You cannot carry the burden 
and the weight of trying to control everything. True, true liberation, true success is letting go and handing over. But we have that authority problem, which is central to the dream of separation. And so we try and kill off anything that tries to control us in our opinion. Everybody else is just going by their own lives, but we want to control the outcome. So how do we control the outcome? By controlling ourselves and dictating to others, and hence the desire for power, money, power, control, because we're so afraid of dying. If you look at politicians and, and people like the World Health Organizations and all these other institutions that want to control everything, they want to vaccinate everybody, Okay, but at the same time, they want to so they vaccinate everybody to, to save everybody. But at the same time, they want to control the population. How can you trust any of that? This is what happens when authorities try to control. When governments try to control their nation, you just get resistance. The more you try and control, the more resistance you overcome. And then you get angry because people aren't playing your game. Meanwhile, you should be only angry at yourself by trying to control everything. His body. Our bodies do not stay. Our bodies do not last. Yet the ego sees us as a double safety. And there's the clever play on the ego. So realizing you don't last, it realizes that by killing you, it can live through other people mourning your life too. For the son of God's impermanence is proof his fences were keeping us separated. And of course, that, that essence energy that came through as a body that dies just recycles because it hasn't awoken to self. Energy cannot be destroyed. The spirit cannot be destroyed. And so, although spirit doesn't take form, it's spirit asleep dreaming all of this. A part of spirit which is asleep dreaming all of this. So it imagines it's taking form. The essence energy of the imagination taking form is the holy essence, the holy spirit in all of us. So the son of God's impermanence is proof his fences work and do the tasks his mind assigns to them. So we've all been scripted by the dreaming mind. And you think you have a way out here or a better way. The only way out of here is no resistance to what is calling on the holy memory of what you are to lift you above the battlefield. So you do not suffer the illusions of this world. For if his oneness still remained untouched, who could attack and who would be attacked? If there's only you, who attacks you and who do you attack? If it's only one, one holy son of God, and who would be victor? And who would be his prey? And who would be his victim? And who's the murderer? And if he did not die, what proof is there that God's eternal son can be destroyed? And so we use the mechanism of the dreaming mind and it's scripted out script to then prove to ourselves that we are real. And then we have this imaginary God, which we then try and pull into the dream by saying, by creating an imaginary heaven, or if you're spiritual, an imaginary spirit world. And then making peace with the idea of incarnation, and we start making up theories that we're now, you know, progressing through soul stages, giving us a sense of specialness over all the rest of the fractured of sleep souls. Because, of course, we're the awake ones, everyone else is asleep. And this is how the ego captures us. And that's how very often the course community and all the other spiritual mumbo jumbo communities out there get so trapped in egoic specialness and write courses and sell courses and seminars. All sorts of nonsense. And even if some of the teachers are just loving and sharing the love of they are in a total non-dual context, like a Rupert Spira or a Muji or a Gangaji or an Eckhart Tolle, what do the followers do? Turn them into deities and worship them or revere them or one about their feet and stuff like that. Because they haven't realized a Muji, a Gangaji, an Eckhart, a Rupert Spira are symbols or symbolic for how we behave mostly when we're awoken to self, not we're enlightened, we're awakened to our immortal reality. We awaken to our absolute reality. We awaken to the essential nature of what we are, which is what? Pure peace. Pure peace. And from peace, as we move through peace, comes joy and the acceptance of what is unconditional love. The body is a dream. Like other dreams, it, is, it sometimes seems to picture happiness, but can quite suddenly revert to fear, where every dream is born, because dreams are born from the central idea of fear, separation, sin, guilt. And this is, and you see it in people, schizophrenic, one moment they're high, happy, happy, hello, nice to see you, next minute they're attacking you. 
One minute they're so happy to listen to your ideas, the next minute they're trying to control the hell out of you. This is bipolarity. This is madness. This is sickness. This Course in Miracles is written for a bunch of mad people. But if you see someone with a Course in Miracles in their hand, they're insane because it's a curriculum to solve the insanity. This course is not a course about truth. Of course, the truth's in it. This is a course about undoing our false separation belief system through the practice of forgiveness, which dissolves the shadow, which makes us believe that this is real. For only love creates in truth. God creates in truth. And truth can never fear. God cannot fear. Made to be fearful, must the body serve the purpose given it by the dreaming mind that remembers not what it is. Even though a part of it is awake, it refuses to answer the call to the part that is awake. Why? It fears its demise, which is true. Because when, it, when, when a shadow gets brought to the light, what happens to the shadow? It dissolves in the light. It disappears. This is the humanity's greatest fear. We don't just fear dying. We fear dying, going to heaven, and then dissolving and never having remembered we've lived at all, which is exactly what's going to happen when we awaken to, to self, because all of us collectively awaken as one, and there'll be no memory of any one of us or of a universe. We awaken as the eternal extension of God's light, the essence energy of God, and that to the dreaming ego is the greatest fear, and so it convinces us that we're real, that a Jesus is a real, that the deities are real, Worship those deities, follow those deities, follow the teachers, and never awaken to self, realizing I'm dreaming all of this up. I've dreamt up Jesus, I've dreamt up Lou, I've dreamt up myself. It's all me taking full responsibility. And even in the course community, you'll see teachers get so stuck and they make the mistake because they listen to someone like Ken who made a fundamental mistake of not, he got it in some cases, but he didn't make a clear distinction between Christ mind, the dreaming mind, and the character Jesus who awoke to the self. And so even because Helen made the, the original mistake of thinking this was the voice for Jesus as opposed to the voice for Christ, the Christ mind in, imbued with God's Holy Spirit, the memory of God calling us to awaken, we've now turned Jesus like Christianity did into a deity. Christianity say, says things like Jesus died for our sins, so we love Jesus because of guilt. Of course, the miracle says, no, he's your brother. There's no sin. There's no guilt. But follow Jesus because he's your brother. He's holding your hand. Hang a second. If there's only one dreaming mind, which is the extension of God, then where is Jesus? Or anybody else for that matter? Jesus has melted into Christ, into the Christ mind. From there, that what which was Jesus, united with the whole Christ mind, caused the rest of our fractured body mind appearances to awaken to the christ mind who is our true companion who's our mighty companion who's our holy companion christ is holy spirit is christ and the holy spirit's the same because it's the same essence energy but it's used as separate words to distinguish that which calls us and that which is calling christ christ is calling that which we hear is christ is the holy spirit is the essence energy of ourself. We have to realize our essence, our energy, our spirit is holy. We are God's Holy Spirit. When we collectively join as one, we collectively are the extension of God's holy love. Made to be fearful, the body must serve the purpose given us, to keep it asleep. However, and that's why you're here. We, that's why you found the course. You found the course because at some stage in your life, it became so overwhelming, you you just that you had to be another way. And so eventually you got to a point of semi-surrender or full surrender, and you screamed up at the heavens or internally and said, there must be a better way. And the minute you were ready to admit there must be a better way, the course found you. And the minute the course found you, it's going to give you a better way. But we can change the purpose that the body will obey by changing what we think it's for. It was made for separation. It's now made, as we've given it over to the Holy Spirit, to unite us in one unity awareness, in one Christ mind. So we give it to the Holy Spirit, meaning is it a spirit outside us, calling us, saving us? Don't objectify. It's the essence energy inside you. It's the memory for God inside you, calling you to be yourself. That's why the journey is not a spiritual journey. It's simply a step inwards. It's an inward step. 
How far is God from you? Closer than close. You're in God. And God is your heart too. And so you just step in. Heart awakens. The awareness awakens. The self is known. Be still and know I am. It's you. It's all you. And now you're listening to me. If you're listening to me, a part of you is handed over, has given this over to God. You've now brought the illusion to God. So I don't want this anymore. I want to just remember what I am. And so the body now becomes the means by which God's son and all his fractured dreaming parts of his dreaming mind returns to sanity. Though it was made to fence him off into hell without escape, yet the goal of heaven has been exchanged for the pursuit of hell. We, and what's the goal of heaven? To be ourself knowingly, to know without, with total clarity and total certainty the essential nature of our true self, peace, love, joy. Not the happiness of body minds, the gentle, peaceful, joyous existence, all-encompassing ex acceptance of the true self. The Son of God extends his hand to reach his brother. That's us, not Jesus reaching his hand to us. Yes, at some stage that symbolically works, but we're now advanced students of the course. We're now moving into complete non-duality. First of all, there's no hand. Okay, it's symbolic. And so we reach out to one another, as I'm doing with you. You do with me. You afford me this stage in order for me to share my knowing, and you and, and I am sharing my knowing. And so you afford me and I afford you. I give to you, give back to me. By sharing this, I remember what I am. By listening to me, you're triggered. That you're triggering the memory inside you. There's no hierarchy in teacher students. Our relationship is maximal. We're all equal in the in the eyes of the Christ mind. Not in the eyes of God. God's unaware of us as bodies, and it's the Christ mind that awakens us to itself. When we all collectively awaken as one being, we awaken in God and realize we never dreamt. So the body is now handed over. And so we extend our hands to our brothers and we walk each other home in love with no judgment. And not just the happy, nice ones. We walk us all home. Now, bearing in mind, don't go and preach and please don't go and minister this. And don't go and create course communities and sit in circles and tell each other's miserable stories. And there's some teachers that say, well, there's no secrets in the mind. So tell me your story. No, no, there's no secrets in the mind, meaning there is no story. We share understanding, we, we ask questions to get clarity, and we don't sit and tell stories about ourselves. That school of thinking is what keeps us bound to imaginary idols, even in the name of Jesus. So awaken to self, find a teacher who has gone beyond your level of understanding and follow them until you get to, and maybe even transcend their level. And then find another one. Eventually, you'll put all teachers down. And as teachers, you'll put all students down and just abide in it and act from a place of love. Now is the body holy. Why? It now becomes a device that serves us in the remembrance of what we are. And remember, all bodies are in animated by the essence energy of the truth, Holy Spirit. And so the truth is within you. Now the body is holy because it becomes a device for the extending of our holy self. Now it serves to heal the mind that it was made to kill. That's the whole purpose of this world is to remind us what we are through the experience of what we're not. And by remembering what we are through the experience of what we're not, we remember our true self. You will identify with what you think will make you safe. Now think about most people in this world, and I'm not judging anyone, but think of the majority of the world. They're trying to accumulate wealth and partners and special love relationships and and jobs and careers and pensions and money and cars and houses because they think it'll make them safe. And then they, the minute they have all that stuff, they need to get a security company to protect them. They, the billionaires need security companies to protect them because it's never enough. No matter how much you have, someone else wants to, another body, in your opinion, as a separate body mind, wants to take it from you because that's how body minds think. They think from a place of scarcity. Yet if you identify with the truth, the symbolic truth of what you are, you are spirit. I'm not a body. I'm free. I'm still as God created me. What fear is there? Because what can be killed? The illusionary body. What could starve? The illusionary body. What could die? The illusionary body. What could be harmed? The illusionary body. What suffers memories of the past and fears of the future? The illusionary body. If you are spirit, you're always present in self. So you'll always identify with what, what you think will make you safe, whatever it may be. 
you will believe that it is the one with you. Your safety truly lies in truth, not in lies, not in illusions, not in deceptions, not in images. Love, which is your essence energy, which is God's essence energy, it's our self-same energy, is our safety. Fear does not exist in love. Identify with love and you are safe, for you are love and love is eternal. Love is all there is. God is love. Love is all there is. Identify with love and you are home, for you are the home of love. Identify with love and find yourself, for yourself is the extension of God's love. Yourself is the love of God. Yourself is God is holy. God is loving. It's the loving, holy energy of God. And it, everything is God extending. And what that what is that loving energy extending? The sonship. What's the sonship? The Christ, the self. What are you? Characters in that self. Awakening to self, meaning you are love. For Christ, self, and love are one and the same essence energy as that which we call God. And I'd see Jesus in a body. He was the representation that a body, okay, which seems to encapsulate and seems to hide the essence energy we are, spirit, cannot hide. And spirit will eventually bring the body into the dissolution of itself. It's not real. It's going to be passed on in some way, whether of natural causes, natural causes, nothing natural about bodies, okay, or some horrible um, death like a crucifixion. But what Jesus also did is it, it Yeshua did was he, he proved we never have to do this again. You don't have to go through such cruelty to awaken to self. So don't see Jesus or Yeshua as a body that's going to save you. Symbolic of what you're meant to be like. And he's not holding your hand because you don't have a hand and nor does he. It's spirit. But he's your spirit. He's one with your Holy Spirit. He is the Christ mind too. And he's actually gone. It's just Christ, which is your true self. Walking your way home, stepping inwards. You travel, but on a journey with no distance to a place you've never left through a time and space that appears as matter that has never existed. Holy Son of God, be that knowingly. Be that knowingly here now. And now we'll continue with lesson 261. So in lesson 261, God is my refuge and security. And there's that wonderful little parable of the eagle flies over a river and down below are two fish swimming. And he looks down at the fish and he says to the fish, hello, fishies, how's the water? And the one fish turns to the next fish and says, what's water? And so we often do not know where we are. Where are we in heaven dreaming of hell? Our bodies abide as characters in the dreaming mind. Where's the dreaming mind? In God. So then where are the characters actually? In God too. So we, the characters of the dreaming mind, that which appears as bodies, are in God too, because we're in the mind in God. We're one holy son of God. We are fractured parts of one dreaming mind who has never left God, who abides in God. And we call that part that's awake to self, Christ mind. I will identify with what I think is refuge and security. So I'll either identify as a body mind thinking I'm in refuge in the world. And then we try and bring an illusion. I mean, the truth to the illusion by bringing our true essence, Christ into the world. And then we just give it a picture, Jesus. And we want to bring Jesus here. Jesus holds our hands. Jesus walks us home. Jesus speaks to us. Jesus, Jesus. And we never, never transcend the non-dual. Never accept the fact that I, I am in God. Jesus is simply a, a symbol for how we're meant to act. And the sad thing is we still have to refer to someone 2,000 years ago because very few people today actually act like that. And then we make up all sorts of stories of how we imagine Jesus would be. And we forget about the parts where it was also fierce grace, as I mentioned moments before, in the temple, when he sorted people out that were selling stuff in where you're meant to be praying because you have to have some place some space in time and space where we can just abide and and in fellowship and in oneness and in unity awareness jesus is simply a, an image of how we're meant to be a symbol for the truth not a symbol to be worshipped 
not a symbol to be objectified. I will behold myself where I perceive my strength and think I live within the citadel where I am safe and cannot be attacked. Where are we safe? But in God alone, where we actually still are and never have left. Let me today not seek security in danger and in and in this world and in adventure, which is always about danger and trying to push it away by stepping through this, the fear. Nothing to fear. Awaken to self. Nor attempt to find my peace and murderous attack by destroying my enemies, by conquering, by being all powerful. What is our power and our glory? The self, which is the extension of God's love. I live in God. In him, I find my refuge and my strength. In him is my identity. Don't identify with Jesus other than the subjective reality of how you should behave. Our ultimate absolute reality is the essence extension of God's loving energy. Identify with that. What's that loving energy called? Spirit. God is the spirit and we abide in him. We are spirit. We abide in God. God is spirit abides in us. In him is everlasting peace. And only there when I'm abiding in silent stillness in awareness and in gratitude. And there will I remember who I really am. I, a fractured body mind appearance, and you, fractured body mind's appearance, and the entire planet and the entire universe collectively are the one and holy, only Son of God. Let me not seek for idols, not even as a representation as Jesus, but truly remember Jesus awoke to self, awoke to the Christ mind. So at least if you're going to use the word Jesus, use the white word Christ. And instead of using the word Jesus, and you know the reasons for that, Use the word Yeshua, it's his name, or Isa, Christ Isa, or Christ Jesus. Don't turn him into an idol. It's a symbol for what you are. I and my father are one. You need to say that just like Jesus did. He wasn't trying to tell, say to you, oh, I and Jesus are one. Yes, you are. But he's trying to get you to get to the same place he got to. I and my father are one. Let me not seek for idols to interpose between me and God. I would come my father, home to you today. We're talking directly to our source. I choose to be as you created me and find the son whom you, you created as myself, capital S self, my holy self, my holy spirit self, the, the, the self which is spirit abiding in God. We return to awareness. We return to the awareness of God. We return our awareness to God who is awareness. By recognizing God is the silent stillness, which is pure awareness, which pervades awareness, which is eternal and unchanged and perfect and innocent and defenseless. And is pure love, is pure peace, pure joy ever extending. God is my refuge and my security. And yes, everybody in this world is my brother, including symbolic Jesus. But God is my refuge. And Jesus reminds me that I and my father are one. Lesson 262. To reinforce what I've just said. And of course, students, this is vital that we get this. Let me perceive no differences today. Not in I, not in you, not in anyone else. Yes, some people are perhaps still awakening to self. There's no one dead asleep. Everybody's awakening at their own stage. Let's not get into levels of who's more awake or not. But let me perceive no differences at all. To perceive is to judge, and to judge is to be asleep. So don't judge Jesus higher than you, or a teacher higher than you, or those people asleep and those people awake. Yeshua, you, I, Christ, are all one Holy Spirit extension of God. We're all one. Father, you have one Son, and it is He that I would look upon today, myself. Capital S. He is your one creation, the ever-extending love of God. Why should I perceive a thousand forms in what remains as one? Why should I give this one a thousand names when only one suffices? That name is I am. I and my father are one. For your son must bear your name, for you created him. God is the great I am. Let me not see him a stranger to his father, 
nor stranger to myself. For he, and we're talking about self now, is a part of me, Jesus. Everyone else in this world is part of the I am and I of him. We are part of you who are our source, eternally united in your love, eternally the Holy Son of God. The truth is in everyone because in everyone is the I, which is the I am. The witness, the observer. In, in Advaita Vedanta, it's the Atman. And what's the essence of the Atman? Brahman, God, Son and Father are one. We who are one would recognize this day the truth about ourselves. We would come home. We are home. We would remember that we are home and rest in unity. For there is peace. And nowhere else can peace be sought and found. We awaken as one holy self to the essence energy of peace, love, and joy. We are. This is unity awareness. This is true non-duality. This is a central message in A Course in Miracles. It's the undoing of our false separate self, dreaming mind, idea system. And it gives us a tool to remember this. How do we get to this remembrance? By abiding in silent stillness. And we've got to practice something. Our function. What's our function? Forgive. Until we realize I only have to forgive a world which I created. I'm actually a world that did nothing to me. I'm forgiving a world that did nothing to me. What's a world? The planet and everybody on it. Because while I fell asleep in my dream of separation, my dream filled with sin, fear, and guilt, I projected my self-hatred onto others. Imagined others were trying to absorb my power, kill me, hurt me, harm me. And I tried to do the same to others. Now I forgive the world for what it did not do. Let me perceive no differences. We're all one true self. Now you may ask me, or at least you should, on a practical reason. What if I've forgiven someone, but they ins insist on staying cruel or, or they insist on being control freaks and controlling everything and dominating and controlling everything? Forgive, forgive, but love, be aware of the love of self you are. Not love thyself. You can't love yourself. Yourself is love. Recognize the love you are and be the love you are. And if someone refuses to see you for what you really are, which is the same self they are, forgive and forget. They will waken to self at their own time. Don't you worry about their soul and them awakening. Some people are just not ready to, to meet the face of Christ, faceless face, as you. And so you be at peace with self and you share yourself lovingly and knowingly. And some are ready to hear and some are not. Some people need to hear the basic levels of non-duality um, and, and bring in the Jesus as the symbolic savior who holds your hand and walks you home and hugs you and tells you you're okay. But at some stage, those students will evolve to the true non-dual understanding and realize but if there's all one, where is Jesus? doesn't exist. It's this Christ mind, the mind I am. And so not everybody is your cup of tea. And as I've said before, I only drink coffee. Lesson 263, my holy vision sees all things pure. Now, vision is a choice. We have to choose. It's like choosing God's will. The minute we say thy will be done, we choose vision. It's a holy vision. It's a vision which is the memory of what we are, the memory of what God is. It's observer awareness. It's right-mindedness. Vision can only occur in right-mindedness. It's seeing from the right mind. It's seeing from the dreamer's awake awareness mind, Christ's mind. Father, your mind created all that is. Your spirit entered into it. Your love gave it life. We're talking about the sonship. The awake sonship as the extension of God's light. And so I, and I would look upon what you created as if it could be, and sorry, and would I look upon what you created as if it could be sinful? So I've dreamt up this illusion. Imagine you created so I don't have to take responsibility. But now I realize you are in my mind. And as I've extended myself, even though I made manifest illusions, in everything I've made is the essence energy of God. And can any of this be sinful? Or have I just looked upon it and sinful because I've projected my self-hatred onto it? I would not perceive such dark and fearful images. 
I'll bring this darkness to the light. I'll bring the illusion to the truth. And as I close in on the truth, the darkness dissolves. And light is all I see, for light is all I am. God is the light with which we see. A madman's dream is hardly fit to be my choice. I was mad when I dreamt this could be real. Instead of all the loveliness with, with which you bless creation, even my own making, you bless all of it because your voice is in all of it, your energy is in all of it, your energy animates all of it, all its purity, all its joy, and its eternal, quiet home in you. Silent stillness abide and be knowingly that you've never left, holy son of God. God blesses what we have made because within everything is the memory for God. Everything's an echo for the voice for God or an, a shouting mirror of the ego you think you are. Choose. Is everyone out to get you because you're an ego body mind fighting for your sovereignty? Or is everything a reflection of the love you are? Christ back at you, not at Jesus. You're not going to see. That's why people get so disillusioned. I don't see everybody as Jesus. And then some madman says they do why everybody appears like Jesus to me and they believe him because they believe that special holiness. The face of Christ is a faceless face. It's just recognizing the essence energy in all of us is the same essence energy in I, I am. And while we still remain outside, which really should read, sorry, Helen, I'm correcting your English. And while we still think we're dreaming outside, while we dream we're outside the gate of heaven, because we cannot be outside, we're in heaven, we're in God. Let us look on all we see through holy vision and eyes of Christ, of course, I, I, Christ is just pure energy, it's not eyes, symbolic eyes of Christ, eyes of love. Let all appearances, all body-mind fractures in the dream, all characters in the dream seem pure to us, that we may pass them by in innocence and walk together, now step inwards, in other words, to our Father's house as brothers and holy sons of God. Now, the plural sons of God is because we're talking about the dream characters. Of course, as we awaken to the one self we all collectively are, it's the son of God. Is there sonship in God? The Course says so. Does it mean that there's billions of sons? Perhaps. We do not know while we're characters in the dreaming mind. The essence of what I am says if God is love and forever extending, God is light forever extending. Light is made up of billions of light cells. Billions of cells of sons of God forever extending the love of God. God is all sons merge into one son. One son, there's no way God ends and we begin. It's a seamless extension of light energy, of love energy, forever oneness, forever in oneness, forever united. All subjective realities merge into one absolute reality, God's reality, God's mind. All minds dissolve into one Christ mind. Who dissolves into God's mind. One father. One extension. One son. Forever extending the love and joy. Of the love we are. Lesson 264 says. I am surrounded by the love of God. Why? Because like the fish in the ocean. I am in God. Father you stand before me. Behind me. Besides me. In the place I see myself. And everywhere I go. Because even though I'm appearing as a character, a localized character in my I am Christ dreaming mind, I'm still in God. You are in all the things I look upon. The sounds I hear and every hand that reaches for my own. Now, in the previous lesson, vision is a choice. So do I choose to see everything as an echo and a reflection of God? Or do I choose to see it as a hateful, vengeful part of my dreaming ego mind? In you, time disappears. And a place and place becomes meaningless belief. There's no space time. That's only in dream. For what surrounds your son and keeps him safe is love itself. It's the essence energy of God, which is what we are. There is no source, but this, there's no God, but this. And nothing is that does not share its holiness. Holy Son, Holy Spirit, Son, Holy Spirit of God, that stands beyond your one creation, true creation, the extension of love the extension of light, or without the love which holds all things within itself. Father, your son is like yourself, self, same essence, not made in the image, made for, as the extension of God. We come to you in your own name today, the I am, the pure I am, the supreme I am, to be at peace 
within, within your everlasting love. We've never light, left. What is love? The absence of bodies, the absence of space time, the absence of activity. It's just pure energy forever extending itself. And this is a call to one another. My brother, join with me in this day today. This is salvation's prayer that we unite in one holy Christ mind. Must we not join in what will save the world along with us, in what will dissolve the world and awaken to reality? What is God's will? That we awaken to his absolute reality and remember the love of God we are. Lesson 265. Creation's gentleness is all I see. Again, we go back to vision. I will to see this. I will to will thy will, Father. I choose to see the gentleness, which is the gentle extension of the I am, the gentle extension of God's love. And therefore, that's why we soften. As we awaken to self, we soften. This rogue, to some people, might be a bit intense. This rogue, 20 years ago, you wouldn't have been able to sit around it. It was fierce. It was angry. It was hurt and the hurt, which is the, the love that it wanted to recognize inside itself and wasn't recognizing it within itself because it needed the recognition of other people, was angry and a fearful person. I am become so gentle in comparison. Perhaps to some people, I'm still a wild rogue. But in my own relationship with self, this is gentleness. And yes, sometimes it's called to act when I, with fierce grace, when I see atrocities in the world and I'm willing to, because I'm talented, skilled that way. And I, I agree to the script, but I don't take my script as what I am. That's just the role I play. We are all actors on the stage and the actor is the true self. I have indeed misunderstood this world because I laid my sins on it, blamed it for my suffering, blamed myself for being a victim of the world, blamed the world for what it did to me. So I placed my sins on it and saw them looking back at me. Perception makes projection. And projection reinforces our perception. How fierce they seemed and how deceived was I to think that what I feared was in the world instead of in my mind, my dreaming mind alone. For my mind was filled with sin, fear and guilt. And so I saw a world filled with sin, fear and guilt. Today I see the world in the celestial gentleness with which creation shines, for it is the love of God ever extending. There's no fear in it. Let no appearance, let no body mind of my sins obscure the light of heaven shining on the world. Let no memory of a past or fear of the future obscure the love of God I am. What is reflected there is, is in God's mind. It is all in God's mind. The images I see are reflections of my thought. All images reflect what I'm thinking. So when I see a gentle, beautiful world, I realize I'm aligned with my I am. It is my mind at one with God's. And so I can perceive create, creation's gentleness because I will to will thy will, Father. Forgive the world for what it did not do. Forgive your brothers for what they did not do. Do nothing in a dream, but dream of exile and separation. In quiet, return to silent stillness, abide in silent stillness and in gratitude and practice forgiveness and then abide. And in quiet, I, would I look upon the world which but reflects your, capital your thoughts, capital T thoughts, God's thoughts. What is God's thoughts? Only love and mine as well. What are your true thoughts? Only love. What are the other thoughts you have? They're not true. Get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, ego. Get behind me, attack thoughts. You have no source. You're not real. Let me remember that they are the, all the same and I will see creation's gentleness. My thoughts and God's thoughts are the same. I can choose to see heaven instead of hell. I can choose again. For my mind is one with our Christ mind, the mind that dreamt us up. And that Christ mind is one with God's mind. And therefore, I am part of God. I am at one with God's mind. Lesson 266. My holy capital S self abides in you, God's son. Myself is God's son. Myself is God's holy son, holy essence. And since God is spirit, the son is spirit too. And if it's holy, holy essence, holy son, holy spirit is you, is the real you. Christ, self, holy spirit, son, self, one, one, I am. Father, you gave me all your sons. 
all all appearances to be my saviors mirrors to show me to to be my gauge of where am i in my awakening awareness to you and my counselors the teachers that came before my appearance in sight the bearers of your holy voice to me which is the silent stillness in all of us that reminds us of the love we are in them you are reflected hence the jesus reflected the love of god wasn't there to make us worship him he was there to reflect you back at you so if you if you at in you're sitting with a with a guru or the teacher or with a jesus if you were standing right in front of you and you just feel this overwhelming love it's not only them love is the absence of distance love is the absence of bodies if you're sensing that love if you're if you're filled with that love it's in you too no duality oneness in them you are reflected and in them does christ look back upon me from myself christ looking back on its localizations localizations dream thoughts from itself realizing it's all me let not your son forget your holy name let not your son forget his holy source let not your son forget his name is yours one loving spirit forever extending you can see why the advita student will say god is dreaming because everything is god it's a big step to take hence we need the understanding god son is that which dreams it's not god that dreams but yes all of it is god the true essence of what it is not the body this day we enter into paradise knowingly consciously i know myself the self is paradise calling upon god's name i am and on our own i am acknowledging our capital s self in each of us united in the holy love of god which is what we are how many saviors god has given us eight billion on this planet how can we lose the way to him when he has filled the world with those who point to him and give us sight to look on them to look upon ourselves and know i and my father are one many saviors many mirrors true knowledge gets passed down from one teacher to another and so every generation just lifts the awareness into the unity awareness don't ever put another teacher on a pedestal you're if you're aware of their wonderful knowledge and wisdom and the love of god in them then realize if you recognize it in them if you recognize it in what you read if you recognize it in this course it must be in you or you wouldn't recognize it some people simply refuse to see the christ in us what do we do some people simply refuse to acknowledge it. They'll just fade from your screen. Eventually, they'll get it. So don't chase after ignorant people that refuse to see the light in themselves and the light in you. Forgive and forget. Ultimately, we all awaken to self. Don't go chasing after, preach, convert. Don't do that. Christianity failed at that. Religion failed at that. Please don't turn the course into something like that. Don't turn it into a money-making racket. Don't start building churches and and groups and don't do that you will ruin it. it yes it may have a 20 30 40 50 100 year lifetime but it will then destroy this beautiful thing and the christ mind will have to come back and channel it again through some unsuspecting helen type person lesson 267 my heart is beating in the peace of god your heart is the peace of god the beating of the heart the rhythm of the heart is the animation of spirit animating this local temporal ethereal body mind projection long enough for it to awaken to self use this time in space and time wisely so that you transcend time transcend space transcend matter into the essence energy we all are surrounding me is all the life that god created in his love so we fell asleep and we fractured this thing and dreamt it all up Yet in each one of us is true life, God's love. It calls to me in every heartbeat, in every breath, in every action, in every thought, non-dual, one. Peace fills my heart and floods my body, this temporal appearance, with the purpose of forgiveness. It's our only purpose. There's no purpose for the world. It was made to keep us asleep. The minute we handed it over to the Holy Spirit, it now gets used as a device to show us through reflections where we are in our awakening stage, awakening to self. 
now that my mind is healed, all I need to save the world is given me. I realize I am, and I pour this I amness with no judgment, and I share all of myself passionately and lovingly and peacefully with the world. Each heartbeat brings me peace because I will to will thy will. I will to cease through vision. Each breath infuses me with strength. I am a messenger of God. We all are. All are chosen. There's not just the chosen few. We are all chosen. It seems like few answer right now. Or so only a few, a handful or a couple of million are answering in the 8 billion of us. In time, the illusion of time, all of us will answer. I am a messenger for, of God, directed by his voice, directed by his memory within me that calls me to be myself knowingly, sustained by him in love and held forever, quiet and at peace with his loving arms, symbolically. He holds us in space. Each heartbeat calls his name and everyone is answered by his voice, by the memory inside us. The I am in all of us, assuring me I am at home in him. Let me attend your answer, not my own, Father. My heart is beating in the peace, the heart of love created, the heart of love God created, love created. What did love create? Love it extended forever. It is there, here now, and only there, here now, that I can be at home. Peace is home. And we will only know the joyous lightness of being when we first establish ourselves at the heart of peace. Because the heart of peace is our primary, primordial, essential energy. And as that essential energy flows, the flow of peace becomes love. And the flow of peace and love together is unconditional acceptance. And unconditional acceptance equals unconditional love, the essence energy of what we all are. Our essential essence energy, the essence. If you get rid of everything else, get back to the rawest essence energy of what we are, the truth of what we are, pure peace, pure joy, unconditional, therefore love. No, unconditional means love. Lesson 268. Let all things be exactly as they are. So what is it we want to do? We want to find fault with the world, correct, fix, based on what we think we are. If every single person in the world got to do what they thought was right, it would be a disaster because we would be straight back where we are. And that's exactly what's happening. We have no unity awareness, so we each have an idea of what it should be. True peace comes when you accept what is, realize the script is written, and it's written only for your highest good. And what is your highest good? To awaken to self and awaken to realize you've never left God, you just dreamt. Accept what is, and everything that happens, happens so that we can practice forgiveness. Everything's either a call for love or a reminder of the love we are in truth. And then, of course, in the ego body mind, everything's a call to believe in places, bodies, things, events, and believe in separation. That's wrong mindedness. From a right minded perspective, from right minded vision, you see either everything is a call for love, even though it's trying to control everything and manage everybody and, and look for power because it's a call for love, where everything's an expression of the love we are. That's right-minded viewing. Let me not be your critic, Lord, today, and judge against you. How many of us have said, I can't believe God has done this. How can God create this and let people suffer and babies die and women be raped and animals be in? God had nothing to do with the making of this universe and the scripts in the story, but he scripted us for us to get out because he's the reminder the Holy Spirit, his voice is the reminder on a way that we transcend this. And as the world plays out, as our scripts play out, we're no longer engaged. We're not detached, no longer attached to outcomes, to people, to places, things, and events. No more at attachment. It's no longer your car, your dog, your fridge, your house. It's just the house, the car comes and goes. Thy will be done. And don't judge against God. Why hasn't he woken me up? He's, let, he's waking you up, but you're getting you, he's getting you to choose and choose again. But you want to hang on to your dream because you're in love with the idea of what you think you are. You're in love with the idea of the world and you think you can fix it to make it holy. You want to bring heaven to this illusion. You want to have a blissful dream. And no matter what you imagine, trust me, it's not even close to the abundance of silent stillness and joyous movement of the essence energy we are. Abide in silent stillness. 
And if you abide there long enough, the joy will flow and nothing in the world, no fantasy you've ever had will match that joyous being, that joyous lightness of being. Let me not attempt to interfere with your creation. Let me not attempt with what you've awoken to us. Remember, we're just looking back on a dream that's already ended, but we're critiquing it. And so we think we're still in it. Let all judgment go and awaken to the reality. You've, you're awake. You're already there. Okay, let me not attempt to interfere with your creation and distort it into sickly forms through my judgments. Let me be willing to withdraw my wishes, my fantasies from its unity and thus to let it be as you created it to be, the eternal extension of God's love. Our natural essential energy wants to return to pure energy. What do we want to do? Hang on to dear form and dictate how this form should act. Let it go. Let go. Let God. For thus I will be able to, to recognize myself, my true capital S self, the essence energy I am, my holy self, my Christ self, my son of God self. You created me. In love was I created. And in love will I remain forever. What can frighten me when I let all things be exactly as they are? Don't pursue not relationships, not things, not what's meant to be comes effortlessly to you. Take it as Take it from someone who grew up poor and built himself into a millionaire by the time he was 30. Nothing made me happy. The only time I was happy is when I was pursuing stuff because I was so busy chasing, didn't have time to think. Didn't make me any happy. Chase, chase, and it's always resistance and fight and fight and fight to hang on to something. No matter what I'd make, I'd hang, I'd hang on to it for dear life. Relationships, activities, businesses, I then eventually surrendered and God just sent me which send me to places like where I am now. And there I'm also to bring light and awareness to it. Whether it wants it or not, I'm there. If they no longer want it, if they reject the light, move away. God will send me somewhere else. Let not our sight be blasphemous today. Let not our ears attend to lying tongues that have taken dogma and shoehorned it into non-dual Christian mysticism, A Course in Miracles. Don't get trapped by biblical teachings trying, shoot, trying to Take over a course of miracles. Don't go beyond this. Christ in you, as you, for you, but the Son of God you are. Only reality is free of pain. Only reality is free of loss. Only reality, and we're talking absolute reality, is wholly safe. And it is only this we seek today and every other day. We seek you first the kingdom of heaven, and all else shall be given you. Why? Because heaven is all else. There is nothing else but heaven, which is the love of God. Lesson 269. My sight goes forth to look upon Christ's face. This is the complete opposite of wrong-minded perception. Remember, it's a faceless face. Don't interpose a Jesus face. Don't go start putting pictures of your guru and Jesus all over the place and looking upon the face. Oh, I'm so in love with the face. You have no idea what that face is. The face we think is Jesus isn't what Christ Jesus was. Didn't look anything like that. Okay. But don't imagine him as an object. Don't objectify Jesus. It's the essence energy in all of us. Look beyond faces and recognize the love in all of us and recognize there's no distance between the love you are and the love they are, for there's no distance in love. Love is the absence of distance. Love is the absence of bodies. I ask your blessing on my sight, my willingness to, to see with Christ's vision. It is the means with which you have chosen to become the way to show me my mistakes and look beyond them. It has given me to find a new perception, a right-minded perception, right-minded perception, awareness. Through the guide you gave me, the Holy Spirit, the memory of God in me, and through his lessons to surpass perception and return to truth. What is his lesson? Forgive, 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 until I realize. There's nothing to forgive. I dreamt this whole thing up. Who am I forgiving? Only myself for dreaming this up. Even in the course, there's a line where Jesus says, forgive me. Okay, it's not Jesus asking you for forgiveness. It's your symbolic Christ self asking you to forgive your Christ self for dreaming up something that never happened. Today, I choose to see a world forgiven in which everyone shows me the face of Christ, the face of love. And that's why people fail it. They're looking to see Jesus everywhere. It's faceless. It's the essence energy. It's the awareness of awareness. The face of Christ and teaches me that what I look upon belongs to me. It's all me, fractures of my one dreaming self. And nothing is except your Holy Son. Nothing is anything but that. 
wrong-minded perception always goes to idolatry, always goes into separation, makes you feel like something is happening and God has come into your dream, but keeps you bound by objectification, subjective, objective illusions, right-mindedness, is simple abidance, non-judgment, observer. You observe without judgment. You observe without any background commentary. Simple silence, simple abidance. The gratitude rises, the joy rises, and then it extends through this appearance of the body-mind and shares with itself knowingly, authentically. Don't try and be spiritual or anything else. Be authentic to your makeup. You're not unique. The uniquenesses we all have is exactly what isn't real. What we all share is what is true of the I am, the love of God we are, the essence energy we are. And then lesson 270, I will not use the body's eyes today. I choose vision. Vision is a choice. For the Christ's vision, the dreaming mind, the part of the dreaming mind which is awake, Christ's vision is your gift to me. So the Holy Spirit in me, the essence energy I am, is reminding me of my awake mind's memory, which is the memory of God. Father, Christ's vision is your gift to me. I'm remembering myself. And when I remember myself, I remember you because myself is made from your essence. It's created from your essence. So my Christ vision is your gift to me. And it has the power to translate all that the body's eyes, all that the, the mind has made manifest or the appearance of manifestation to projection. All that the body's eyes behold into the sight of a forgiven world, because that's the first step towards awakening. How glorious and gracious is this world? Why? Because it's actually the love of God, which I once perceived as fear, sin, and guilt and separation. Now perceived through the right mind, it's all the love of God. And the minute you choose to see the world that way, the world starts reflecting it back at you. Yet how much more will I perceive in it than sight can give when I truly know I am? The world forgiven signifies your son's acknowledgement of his father. And it lets his dreams be brought to truth. The illusions brought to truth, not truth into the dream. Can't be done. And waits expectantly the one remaining instant, the holy instant, more of time, which ends forever as your memory returns to him, the I am. And I awaken to self and that's the step that God takes. We can only prepare. This course is preparing us for the atonement, preparing us by letting us go and let go of any desire for illusions for the world, for people, places, things, and events. But we extend the love where we are. Nothing left to forgive. This course is preparing us. This is a course in preparation where it flips us upside down and prepares us. We come empty unto God. And now his will is one with yours. His function now is but your own. And every thought except your own is gone. It's only the thought we share with God. Unconditional love, the love we are. And here we go again in quiet. Return to silent stillness. In the quiet of today, we'll bless our hearts. See, we can't heal ourselves. We just hand it over to God and abide in silent stillness. We practice forgiveness, so we have no past memories, no future fears. We abide. And in the abidance, the light of awareness, the light of God's love, clears our filters, clears our habitual patterns. The quiet of today will, will bless our hearts and through them peace will come to everyone while we're all in the same place. Christ is our eyes today. Christ is our vision today. And why Christ, our awake mind is our sight. And through his sight, we offer healing to the world through him, through, through our own self, through the sight of the Christ awake self we are, the observer self. We offer the world healing through him, the Holy Son of God. Sorry, the Holy Son whom God created whole. Talking about all of us. The Holy Son whom God created one. So return to silent stillness. Abide as frequently as you can. That is your tithing. Yes, give to charity by all means. Give to your institutions. But give your time to God. Is 10% of a day too much to ask? Abide in silence, stillness. Abide in gratitude. Make sure that you've forgiven everything there is to forgive. Let the attack thoughts come. Observe where they come. Show, look at the lessons they're trying to show you. What is it, What is still unforgiven? An attack thought is an unforgiven thought. Forgive, 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 forgive. What is to forgive? Is it to say there's something wrong and you're in a better place and you forgive? It's to realize forgive means 
wasn't real. It wasn't real. It wasn't real. It wasn't real. I just dreamt it. I just dreamt it. No matter what horror, horrific dream you had last night, if you realize it isn't real, are you walking around guilty? If you've gone and murdered something in your dream, you've gone and murdered puppies and kittens in your dream, do you wake up the next day and carry guilt with you? You may for a little while, but when you realize it was just a silly dream, I would never do that. I love animals. The guilt's gone. Well, holy son of God, you're awakened God recalling a memory of a dream you never had and you haven't forgiven yourself for the madness of the dream you never had you never had it it wasn't real if it was real it would be in god's reality and we'd be trapped it's not in god's reality your dream is not god's reality your dream is a dream that you alone thought you had and you thought it was real the only thing that is real is the love of god forever extending and you are that you are the kingdom you are the love of god in him, the Holy Son, whom God created whole, the Holy Son, whom God created one, one eternal extension of himself. I hope this brings you clarity. I hope this brings you peace. As I say, this is the next 10 lessons. You can do one a day. You know, just pause and the next day go to the next. Or you can do all 10 every day. And this will enlighten and awaken you to the light of and love of God you are. Be blessed. Be at peace. Thank you for joining me and may you have a blessed week ahead of you. Amen.